Dr. David Furman is an associate professor at the Buck Institute and the director of the Stanford 1000 Immunomes Project, the world's largest longitudinal population-based study of immunology and aging. Dr. Furman's lab integrates systems levels immunity in humans to accelerate knowledge of how the immune system affects aging and related chronic diseases. And with that, let me start the interview. Dr. Furman, you run a lab at the Buck Institute focused on immunology of aging, and also you're the director of the Stanford 1000 Immunomes Project. So welcome to Modern Health Span, and thank you so much for joining our channel today. Thank you for having me. So Dr. Furman, can you give us some background as to what led you to study inflammation and then to kind of tie that to aging, or was it the other way around? Um, no, actually, uh, about 20 years ago in the early 2000s, um, in the immunology space, we started talking about uh, the fact that certain aspects of the immunity uh, will contribute to aging and age-related diseases that are non-communicable. We all know that the immune system is important for infections, uh, mm -hmm. now especially more than ever. Um, and we also know that if it goes awry, we could develop autoimmunity. But aging, that was, that was wild. Um, we had no idea about the components that will participate in aging and age-related diseases. And that led me to, um, to really finish my PhD, come to Stanford and try to change things um, from, from, from understanding the immunology of aging and how that participates not only in uh, types of cancer, but also in cardiovascular disease, in Alzheimer's, in infertility. And we have now a number of other programs, including frailty um, and accelerated aging of other parts of the, of the body. Right. So, do you know what's kind of driving, how does inflammation drive these other hallmarks of aging, because we have the, the hallmarks of aging um, that you mentioned, but inflammation seems to be kind of at the base that's, that's driving them. Do we understand that mechanism? There's, I would say very little um, understood. Um, we know that from about, I would say a couple hundred articles out there, uh, peer reviewed articles that uh, inflammation will trigger um, cellular senescence will trigger telomere attrition. It could trigger also genomic instability and many other hallmarks of aging, uh, such as epigenetic programming, uh, protostasis, uh, dysregulated uh, 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 nutrient sensing, for example. Mm -hmm. So those are the uh, major hallmarks of aging that we now know inflammation is a major contributor to. Okay. So could we take a a step back. So what is inflammation at a physiological level? Um, can we know what like acute inflammation looks like, right? I mean, your skin goes red. And, but when we talk about chronic inflammation, what, what is that? So the definition of inflammation is really the response uh, to a, a foreign and, uh, element. It could be infectious and it could be uh, other types of um, triggers. In case of infection, you see uh, what we call acute inflammation is what you're referring to. It gets swollen, it gets warm, it gets red, uh, and it should um, go back to normal within three to seven days. In the case of systemic chronic inflammation, we're talking about a very different entity. I would have even call it inflammation, uh, to tell you the truth. So what you, what you see in this type of inflammation is, first of all, the triggers are different. We're talking about things that uh, you're exposed to, your lifestyle, the way you treat your body, um, how much you sleep, the level of stress, the level of pollutants in the air, plasticizers, the hormone disruptors, what you eat, yeah. um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So all this is under the umbrella of the exposure. So that's very different from acute inflammation. And that's, it happens slowly and it accumulates with time. There are no canonical markers for systemic chronic inflammation. Um, and, and that's very different from acute inflammation where in the clinic, we actually know 
many of the biomarkers out there and, and you can measure them from blood. Um, in cases of, of systemic chronic inflammation, um, it's obviously not beneficial. It uh, causes collateral damage in tissues and organs, increases the likelihood of developing a number of diseases of aging. And there are uh, so far uh, up until uh, today, no markers in the, um, in the clinical practice for this type of inflammation. So how does it cause the damage? I mean, if there's no markers, there must be some physiological uh, reason for, for the damage being caused. Do we know what is doing that? Oh, it, it largely depends on the tissue that we're talking, the type of disease we're talking. Um, we largely studied cardiovascular aging. Um, and as the cell will age over time, they start producing a number of inflammatory markers mm -hmm. and the same uh, biomarker will act upon those cells, especially in the endothelial uh, linen of, um, of the lung, for example, and, and the cardiovascular system as well. Uh, and that causes accelerated senescence in those cells. And obviously that's causing damage. In the case of Alzheimer's disease, that's very different. There are different types of molecules causing damage in the brain. In the case of um, cancer, uh, the cellular uh, uh, tr transformed cells that are cancerous um, cannot live without inflammation. So they actually are, you, you are fuel them with inflammation. They grow, they, they metastasize. So it really depends on the type of disease we're talking about, uh, the mechanism um, that, um, that relates between, you know, that, that, that it's the link between inflammation and disease phenotypes. Right. So the, the increase of inflammation as we age is really a function just of, of time and perhaps like the level of insult that we, we kind of commit our body to. It's both. You're absolutely right. It's both. Um, at the population level, you will see an increase in inflammation in this type of inflammation, but there are deviations to that. There's people very, very healthy uh, where you see that the, the, the rates of inflammation are slower um, and people that have accelerated rates of um, inflammation um, even individuals in their 30s or 40s that show inflammatory ages of mm. 65 or 70. And they develop diseases uh, that, that, that you only see in the uh, older adulthood. Uh, right. And I, I definitely want to get to the, your, the clock. But I had a couple of other questions. So we have, um, you, we talked about senescence and senescent cells and, and they create SASP, right? They, they release SASP. But SASP is um, releasing like uh, interleukin-6. And so more kind of classic acute inflammation markers, I think it would be. So is, is SASP part of SCI? Um, there is an overlap. Um, it's not perfect. I would say maybe between 40 and 50% overlap, which is, which is something. Um, uh, most of the acute markers are not in the uh, SCI uh, index that we measure or the systemic uh, inflammation that we have measured uh, in the Stanford Thousand Immunomes project that we're going to talk about. Yeah. Right. So would you, would you count SASP or senescence as being part of SCI or, or it's a separate I, no, I would, I would say it's definitely contributing. Um, and we published this uh, earlier this year where we demonstrate that uh, endothelial cells undergoing senescence, they secrete uh, a number of inflammatory markers. When you calculate the inflammatory age of these cells, uh, they, they go up to the sky. So it's, it's, it's much related. It's, it's not much exact, related. it's not perfect, but they contribute. The SAS right. contribute to SCI. Okay. So I had one. So arthritis. So I'm just trying to understand this. So arthritis. So arthritis to me looks like classic acute inflammation, right? Because it's swelling and it's sore. And um, 
but also it goes on for a long time. So, or potentially it could go on for a long time, which would make it chronic. So would you consider arthritis as chronic or is it acute or is it somewhere in between? Yeah. Um, so these kind of uh, joint uh, bone illnesses are, are in the middle. So we do see, and, and there's all, all, also other examples, um, say tuberculosis. That's an, you know, it's a, it's a response to an infection. Um, however, it gets chronic. Right. Yeah. Um, so there are those cases in the case of arthritis, I would say it's definitely both. Uh, you have markers of acute inflammation, but you also see this uh, sustained over time. Um, uh, we are redefining inflammation. There's a lot of confusion in the field. We're writing uh, a paper now, a review paper as I speak on the different types of inflammation. There's not just one or two. Uh, there are many, many subtypes um, between chronic uh, and, and uh, 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 systemic, uh, local, chronic, acute, and I think there's meta-inflammation, para-inflammation. The, the field is growing. Right. 